All right. Our first question is from Corinne from Pennsylvania. Hey, Corinne, how can we help you? Hey, you guys. First of all, thank you so much for all you do. I really appreciate all the content you produce. And Sal, I am so excited for your book. I cannot wait for it to come out. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so my question is um, specifically relating to when I deadlift and do barbell rows. Uh, well, I have been lifting consistently for about four and a half years but I've been noticing more and more as I've been developing kind of more capability with these movements I, f I feel the lift in a different place on my right lat and my left lat and I basically am just not sure if there's any sort of priming movement I can do if there's any mental cue that I might be missing when I approach these movements that's kind of inhibiting my ability to um to kind of, to I guess finish the lift correctly yeah, that's a, that's a great question, and it's actually quite common, especially when people st first start to develop muscle. They'll say things like, I feel it more on my right side of my chest than my left, or more on my right shoulder than my left. Um, without watching your form and watching you work out, because that would help me really diagnose more specifically what's going on, really a good rule of thumb in a case like this is to go lighter, to slow down, and to focus on the squeeze, mm -hmm. right? So... Let's say you're doing a barbell row and you're, you, you, like you said, you're feeling it more on one side or the other or it just feels different. I would take the weight and I'd cut it in half, uh, literally. Go down you know, 50% so it's much, much lighter. And then slow down the rep. And then when you get to the part where you're squeezing, where the barbell is near your midsection, hold the barbell there and then squeeze your back and your lats as hard as you can and try as hard as you can to feel the exercise where you want to feel it. It's going to take a little bit of practice. But in my experience, this general advice tends to work for most people. So, Corinne, are you on Facebook? Corinne? Hello? Yes. Right. Hello. Sorry. So, <laughs> yes, I am on Facebook. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have Doug give you access to our private forum. This is one of the things that we do quite a bit inside this forum is people will post videos of them doing exercises that are trying to troubleshoot this exact thing. So before I start trying to take guesses at what might be going on here, uh, it would help out a, a tremendous amount if you were if you posted a video of you actually rowing or deadlifting, because I'm gonna I'm gonna look I'm gonna start at the floor and work all the way up and 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 see if I see any sort of discrepancy. And sometimes somebody is just slightly pronating on uh, on one of their feet, so it's their their feet are just barely collapsing in the, a tiny bit, and it's running its way up the kinetic chain, and they're feeling it on one side more than the other, their back, and they don't even realize it because they're looking up, you know, from the hips up, they're not even paying attention to their feet because it's a back exercise and most people don't make that connection. So I would love to see a video so I could kind of look and see how you're moving. And then there's other common things where, you know, we, if you're right-handed and you, you write with your right, you drive your right, do everything with your right hand. A lot of times clients will, their right side, their shoulder will be rolled a little more forward than their left side. And so then when they go to do an exercise like a bent over row, that right side that's protracted forward a little bit more doesn't quite get the same engagement and squeeze on the lat on the right side as the left side does. So it could be a lot of different things like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're already – the fact that you're aware of it, I mean, that's huge. Uh, the next step, I'd say, is to, is to get another pair of eyes on it that, that are looking from the outside. Yeah, to kind of piggyback on both uh, the guys, what they've kind of contributed. I, I also think, like – Spending a lot of time in unilateral training helps uh, in going slow and and feeling your way through that and going for the squeeze. But anytime there's a discrepancy uh, and I feel one side overpowering the other, um, I tend to just you know put a halt to uh, you know any kind of bi-loading situation and go back to unilateral and, and really try to regain that stability and support. Yeah, you know it's a good exercise for instead of the barbell row, um, you could try a one arm cable row, either standing or seated. And like I said earlier, go light, slow, and really focus on the squeeze. Typically, if you can, in that shortened position, in that squeeze position, if you could feel the muscle in the squeeze position, then the rest of the repetition tends to follow suit. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. I actually just started a um, map split not too long ago and the one arm dumbbell row is something, uh, well, the alternating one is something I never tried before. So I am, I have been experiencing some, some benefits with that, but I'm curious to see if I'll see the carryover as I start to incorporate um, more of the, the two handed stuff. Excellent. For sure. Yeah, you definitely will. Thanks for calling in. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day guys. Thank you. I love questions like that. I mean, the fact that, uh, 
you know, I think that's one of like the steps you try and get every client to, right? When they, they she's first paying attention, right? Exactly. She's already at, at a, a place where she's aware. Most clients are just completely yeah, they're just moving the bar. Yeah, mm-hmm. completely unaware. They see how you move and they just try and emulate it. They're not really paying attention to what muscles are supposed mm-hmm. to be working. So the fact that she's already aware of that there's some sort of a discrepancy there, and she's even had the awareness to probably video it or see, and she says the bar looks even. But again, until I see that video, it could be like I said, something mm-hmm. so so small in their feet that are run, that's running all the way up that's throwing that off. Yeah, totally. and it's uh, the strength of a barbell of barbell lifts is the fact that you can load uh, them so heavy, mm-hmm. and they're great for overall strength. Because of that, you tend to build a lot of muscle with them. But along with that comes a weakness, which is one side can definitely do more than the other. Dumbbells are excellent at evening the body out, especially when you do one d- dumbbell exercise at a time. So rather than doing a two-arm dumbbell row, you do a one-arm dumbbell row and then let the weaker side dictate the amount of weight that you use. This is why barbells and dumbbells complement each mm-hmm. other so well. Oh, yeah. It's just a healthy practice because, I mean, even when you feel balanced uh, and you're going through a lot of barbell training, eventually uh, one side is going to sort of take over the other. And so it's just a good practice to, to go back to uh, dumbbells and do some unilateral training. 